Hello. Nice to see you. It's another really beautiful day here where I live in Bakersfield, California. I think the weather's, let me see. Let's check in on the weather today. Right now, it is 70 and we're uh, Fahrenheit and we're supposed to have a high of 79. Big, beautiful blue sky. I'm sorry I didn't send the link out in advance this time. I've had a lot of chaos at my house. I'm having some uh, remodeling done. And this week they've been working on the floors. So right now, about half my house, the floors, the, all, the floors in my house are all oak. So right now about half of them have a fresh coat. They've just been sanded and have a fresh coat of the finish on them. So I can't really walk from one side of my house to the other and kind of makes it you know, a little bit chaotic around here. So sorry about not sending the link out in advance. I hope you were able to find it. So let's see who's on here. Linda Annabal from British Columbia. Chris Hoffman from Rainy Day in Indianapolis or Indiana. Deb Rohrbach, um, she's also getting the rain. Judith Andres from Florida. Mary Inman from Atlanta, Georgia. 37 Vega Lira from California. Barble B um, in um, here in Graz, Grazi. Francis Monroe from Lyon, France. Elizabeth Nielsen from Sweden. Mary Tobita from New York City. And Carolyn Finnerman from the Central Oregon. Belinda Drabble from England. I feel like I know all of you. I think we need to have a get together. <laughs> oh, somebody gave me a thumbs down just now. I saw it. That's just amazing. Agnes Amaral from Janeiro, Brazil. Joan Miller from Kansas City, Missouri. Debbie Newland from Bakersfield, one of my friends. Carol Brasino. Sylvia Earle from Cameron Park, California. Kelly Mycat. From New Hampshire, Sherry, Sherry per, uh, Purcell from Washington, Sidra Goldsmith from Vancouver, Mary Brandu from Ann Arbor, Michigan, Dee Verity from Idaho, and more. Nice to see you all here. Today's not going to be a big, long session. And before I start, I want to tell you, I know there has been a lot of confusion about the underarm, the arm side of the schematic. And I have had to take a step back and think how to simplify it. And I'm rewriting that entire section. So there's kind of a little bit delay because I'm rethinking the whole thing and rewriting it and simplifying it. I'm going to keep all the material that's there currently still in there, but a lot of it will be moved to the appendix. So if people want to see the nitty gritty and all of the, the, the very, very fine details, if they're interested, it'll still be there, but it will be in the appendix. And I'm going to have a more simplified version up front so that it is appealing to a wider variety of people. So that's what's happening with that. Um, so today, I'm going to show Jackie again. Where she's going to come in uh, right now, and she's going to demonstrate her first sloper. Again, you've seen this sloper. And then she's going to go and change to her third sloper, which we just finished, so you can see the contrast between the two. And we'll talk about what the changes that we made. So if, yeah, as you remember, <laughs> this is my friend Jackie. Yeah. So um, this is the first one we made, and we didn't like all this extra fabric here, and we ended up moving the sleeve in. This one's been moved in. So this one has the original where the shoulder was hanging too far out, and there was too much extra fabric in the body here, and we needed to move it up. So we did that over here. So this side looks better already. And at this side, you can see this was using two inches at the top here. And we brought this edge in a little bit. So go change it to the other one. So remember that. And that one had the bust shaping. So she's going to come back in. And then I'm going to show you how we make the changes. We're going to do some shaping and how to transfer that information onto the schematic where it's going to be most useful. And then we'll talk about how you would use that in your knitting, okay? So
So it's also kind of stinky in here because they just put a finish on the floor. You know, you have that that paint smell. I have all the windows open, but it's still. So, so here we have, this is her final one. Do you see the difference? It just fits. This looks good. Turn around and see the back. It fits, looks really, really good. So there's absolutely no bus shaping in this at all. Um, and what we're gonna do right now is we're going to look at the back. We have a little bit of extra fabric here. If we look at the front, there, the front looks good. I don't think we need to do anything here. It uh -oh. looks really good just the way it is. But I think what we're gonna do on the back is we're going to pull in, uh, do a little bit of way shaping on the back. So I want you to stand sideways so I can actually see. And so I'm gonna do it at the level of her waist. And I'm just going to pull in here. And here, and let's turn to see what it looks like. So I've just taken a little bit in and here and here. So then what I do is I take my marking pen. If I find my marking pen, we we'll use this one. And I mark where the teeth are on here. I'm going to make a mark here and here. here and here right on the fabric and we're going to take these out and then she's going to go take this off so you can see the marks here 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 and here she's going to go take it off and bring it back okay and then i'm going to use that to transfer that information onto her quarter scale schematic um Remember, if you have questions, put the questions in all cap. Now, someone asked on Ravelry, what is the purpose of a sloper? The purpose of the sloper is to see if your plan, your plan for knitting is going to fit you. Now, when we did the raglan, and then we did the yoke, and then we did the uh, drop shoulder garments, those, as you knit them, well, the yoke and the rag, as you knit them, you can try them on because remember they were in the round and you could try them on as you go. So you really didn't need a sloper for those garments. Thank you. Um, but this one, you can't try it on as you go because it's knit in pieces. So you don't want to end up being surprised at the fit. It does take a little bit of time to make the sloper. It might even take you six, eight, or 10 hours to make a sloper, but it's not gonna take near as long to make a sweater and then find out that it doesn't fit. It's easier to make the changes on the sloper. You don't have to do this. It is not a requirement. It's a nice but not necessary, but I find it very, very educational, especially for the fit of the set in sleeves. Once you understand how your body works, with the set in sleeves, then you can use that information forever forward in any garments that you make with set in sleeves. You can actually use it for raglans and yokes too, because you know then how deep it uh, your arm depth is, armhole depth that fits you. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna go to my hands now, and we're gonna look at this garment. So here's her garment. And here's the marks that we made on the back. So we're gonna measure these. This one is about one and three eighths. This one's one and a quarter. So let's use one and a quarter. And you, we can see here's the midline right here, the fold of the fabric. So this one, the center of it, it's about three inches, about three inches from the center, okay? So we can use this information on her back. This is her back. And where her waist is, Let's see from the information we have here. Her back neck to waist is at the 15 mark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
right here. That's her waist level. And so we want to go three squares away on each side. And we're going to make these a one and a quarter inches wide. So it's going to be right here and right here. So what we're going to put in now is you don't when you're making waist shaping, you do, you want to have an area at the level of the waist that is straight and I'll explain why in a second. So we're putting that in right now. That's from the waist up for 1 inch. The reason you want to have the straight area is because if you're knitting up this way and you're going to make decreases, you don't want to make decreases to this point and then all of a sudden start making increases to go up this way because what will happen is you'll end up with a little dimple in your knitting and we don't want that. So you need the area that's about an inch straight with no increases or decreases. And then we're going to come down three inches one, two, three. And we're going to, this is like a dart. And I'll explain to you how you make the dart. And we'll talk a lot about this in when we actually start knitting also. There'll be fine details about this and showing what kind of increases, what kind of decreases, your choices, what they look like. So what does that look like? Doesn't that look like a dart in sewing? We would make another one over here. So if you're knitting from the bottom up, you would knit up to this point, and here you would start making a decrease between here and here. This is three inches. Let's say you need to remove five stitches. And you're get, let's say you're getting five stitches to the inch, you need to remove an inch, and you're getting seven rows to the inch. So between here and here would be 21 rows. And you could make your first decrease on row one, your last decrease on row 20 or 21 right here. And you want to make three more decreases because you need five total. So if we used row 1 and row 21, that leaves us 19 rows in between to make three more decreases. If we want them evenly distributed, we would divide 19 by 4. So that would give us about 5 rows averaging. So you'd make a decrease here, here, and here to get rid of the 5 stitches. Then you would work straight for 1 inch. And then you would make an increase here, and the last increase would be here. And you would evenly distribute the increases just like that. Now you could do the same thing over on the edge if you want. I think it looks better inside the fabric, but you could also do the same thing over here. For example, you could do her waist shaping here. And in some cases, this might be preferred. It depends, one, two, three. It depends on the design you're making in your fabric. So you could do one here and one here, or you could do one here and one here. Let's say you're doing an all over stitch pattern. Like I have, I'm making, this is uh, my swatch that I'm working on for my sweater. and it's an all-over stitch pattern. It would not look good to put these decreases in to create shaping here. So my choice on this could be to put them in the side. You could put them in the side, then it wouldn't interrupt this stitch pattern. Or another thing that I could do is I could change needle size. So let's say I'm using a four needle up to here, I could go down to a three and maybe a two, back up to a three and to a four here. So I don't have to change my stitch count. I'm not making increases or decreases, but I would be making the fabric narrower here by using a smaller needle. 
and it would not interrupt my stitch pattern at all. And that's the method that I'm probably going to use here. If you have a stitch pattern like cables or something where you can make the increases and decreases and not affect the fabric, then this is a good choice here. I use this most of the time, this method right here. I use this some of the time. And when I have an all over stitch pattern like this that I don't want to interrupt, I use the method of going down in needle size and then back up again. So this is how you would transfer the information to your schematic. Now notice on Jackie's schematics, we have, here's her front, and here's the back. We can see the shoulders are exactly the same. Up until this, what the way people make a, a larger front than a larger back is to choose a larger size for the front smaller size for the back. But if you use a larger size for the front, guess what? You're also going to get wider shoulders and then the shoulders do not match. So with the method that I'm teaching you, it gives us the top portion of the back and the front are exactly the same. They match. And then what changes is the back, because her back is narrower than her front, they're not coming out as much as these. See this? So as we change down, we can see that the front is wider than the back. And then the sides need to be the same length also. The sides need to be the same length. If you're going to put in bus shaping, for example, let's say you were going to add an inch of bus shaping this way, then this of course would be an inch longer here. But once in the bus shaping, let's put some fake bus shaping in here. I'll have to erase all this. So if we had the bus shaping like that, this inch of fabric would not be here. So you would need to add an inch down here so that the front and the back match. And when you seam these up, you'll have the exactly the same number of rows here as you have here. So any questions about this so far? Let me look over here on the side. I'm looking for the word question. Don't forget to give me thumbs up. Thumbs up. I like that. And it kind of helps my videos be seen more on Ravelry. I'm looking for questions. Carolyn, comment, making the sloper was a fun exercise, played with the first version, made a second, and I'm very happy with the results. I learned a lot about my body. Yes, I, when the first time I made a sloper, I learned so much about my body. Gillian, Jillian, question, for the back waist shaping, shouldn't you mark the length of the darts top and bottom location as well? Um, not on the uh, sloper. You don't need that. You just need to see whether it removes that fabric for you because you're just going to assume, we're going to assume that it's going to go up three inches above the one inch of the waist and three inches below. So it's going to be a seven inch span, a seven inch span from the top of the shaping to the bottom of the shaping. But that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Okay, that's all the questions that I see on there. Is there anything else? Because I'm going to make this short today because I've got this stuff going on in my house and I am rewriting the arm side part of the pattern. Diana Danko comment, the thumbs down are gone and they must have been clicked by mistake. Thank you for, thank you for pointing that out. You know, this is all work and to be appreciated for your work is nice. You know, to be unappreciated for your work is not very nice. So that's how it goes. MXP question. When making the decrease on the side seam, are you only decreasing on the back part or evenly along the seam? You can do the front and the back. Now, I, sh I showed on Jackie, I just made back darts because she doesn't need front darts. For myself, I'm putting them in the front and the back. So that's why making the sloper is really cool because you can experiment with pinching the fabric in to make the darts and see what it does for you. I have a friend here in Bakersfield who's very, very short. 
and she makes uh, her, and she's very boxy shaped. She doesn't have any waist. But we put in a little bit of waist shaping, and not only did it make her look like she had a waist, it made her look taller. It made her look taller. Okay, Susan Marie. I always like to hear from her. Last week, one of the slopers had bust shaping. Can you remind me what you did to eliminate the bust shaping? What we did to eliminate the bust shaping was by making the waist shaping on the back for her. This is for Jackie's. The first one had the bust, the darts here. Had the darts here. But what that did is it made her front too long. And as I say in the um, materials that I give you, the written document, if the front is two inches or less longer than the back, you don't need to adjust for that because this fabric, knitted fabric, is so stretchy this way that your bust can stretch out two inches easily without making the front shorter than the back. But if you have more than a two inch difference, you just want to accommodate for anything greater than two inches. Let's say you have a, your front is three inches longer than your back when you measure from here. Then you'll want to make the front one inch longer. And the way you're going to do that is with bust darts or abdomen darts. I have another one to show you. In fact, um, this is really good. That reminded me that I wanted to talk about this one too. This is a person who has a larger abdomen. Let me go to my hands. This person has a larger abdomen. So this is not bust shaping and the short rows are not going to be put in all like this. This is just an example for making the sloper to see how it looks. So on this person they come down and here is their um, bust, their chest measurement, but here is the abdomen measurement. So their abdomen is larger on the front. The dotted lines are the back measurement. So this person needs extra fabric in the front and length. So the front is going to be one inch. They have three inch difference between the length of the front and the length of the back on their body. So on the garment, we're going to make the front one inch longer. This is the front. The dotted lines are the back garment. The second dotted line, this is where the ribbing is going to be. So this is ribbing. This is ribbing. So we need to add one inch. And I just put the dart in like this. But in reality, this person's going to add a short row, like from here to here. They need to add three short rows. That'll give six extra rows. Another one here, and another one here. So they're kind of spaced out, evenly distributed across the abdomen. That'll just give an inch of extra fabric in the front. On their back, here's the back, and you can see that the uh, arm size match between the front and the back. It's just that the abdomen comes out. So the front and back from here up are exactly the same. This person doesn't have a difference in their chest circumference, just in the abdomen circumference. So here is the back right here, the width of the back and the width of the front. And this is the sleeve for this person. So that's just another example. So this person needs some short row shaping in the front of the garment. On Jackie's, we experimented with putting short row shaping in on her first one, but she is more, her bust is more this way wider than it is this way wider. So we can see between the front and back on hers how the front is much wider than the back. So what we really needed was to add fabric this way. And sometimes you need to add fabric this way and this way, but for Jackie, that did not work. We tried it and it did not work. Susan, Susan Marie, does that answer your question? And this is 37 Vega Lira. Question, could you please talk about the arm side for Jackie and how you incorporated the difference with the width between front and back? Yes. So, on Jackie, on her underarm, her underarm is 
one, two, three, it was six inches. So three inches of that's gonna be on the front. And so it, go, it measures from here to here. So it's three centimeters. From here to here is three centimeters. That's three inches on this chart. This is also three inches on here is our arm side. Three inches. The difference in her chest width is in this area right here. You absorb it in this area right here between here and here. So her, this is one and a half inches. You can see on the front that it's two inches to the edge here. And here it's three and a half inches. So she has one and a half inches more on the front than on the back. That one and a half inches is absorbed right in this area right here. And that's why this slopes out more. This and this are the same. From here to here and here to here are the same. And that's one of the things that I am modifying in rewriting that portion of it because when you start breaking things down to an eighth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch, even a quarter of an inch, in knitting it means nothing. It's That's less than a stitch or one stitch. One stitch is not going to make a difference. There's no reason to get down to those small numbers. It just creates confusion. So I'm removing that portion. I'm making it working with the larger numbers, whole numbers of stitches. Okay? KN, question. I may have missed it. What is the design difference of the second versus the third versions of Jack? The first version we put the um, bus starts in, and the second version we removed the bus starts and used front waist shaping. The third one, we lowered the armholes by one inch. Let me step back. The first one, you saw what it was. We, we brought in the shoulders by one inch on each side, and we removed the bust darts for the second version. And But the, then we found that we needed to add front shaping, but I think it's because the fabric was being pulled up in the armholes. So the third one, we lowered the armhole depth by one inch. We kept the shoulders in an inch, and those are the only changes that we made. And it made a world of difference on how her sloper fits. Arlette Garcia says they're also doing renovations. Lots of fun. If you could see my living room right now, my entire household of furniture is in my living room, which is the room right next to this one. So it's kind of unusual. Jan Rowetter, what does the I tag stand for? It stands for It Takes a Guild. And that's what this is all about. I listen to what you have to say. I listen to how you're learning. I pay attention to whether you are getting what I'm saying. If you're not, I need to reword it or show you in a different way. I want you to be able to get it. So I I was going down one avenue that was getting more minuscule, minuscule, minuscule on details, and I think that threw a lot of people off. So I need to change and go down another avenue which has larger details, easier to understand, that will give you very similar results. The results are, the difference is so small that you will not be able to tell, okay? Nick Scuba, question, if you were to make your sloper by draping, how would you transfer the information to your graph paper? That's hard. That's hard. Thank you, Dimitri, for reminding about the questions on Ravelry, and I think I've answered them. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. This is another part of it takes a guilt. See, people reminding me uh, because the information's like this. Whoops, I froze. Oh no. My computer froze. Are you are you still there? Can you see me? I seem to have froze. Oh dear. Okay. Now I'm back. I froze for a minute. I'm sorry. 
it takes a guild and it takes everybody we're all working together and um Okay, so another thing, since working on all this, because I learned from making the um, slopers on my friends, I learned so much. So I've made four slopers now in the last two weeks for four different people. And the third and fourth one came out almost perfect the first try. You saw Jackie and Judy. Judy's, her second one looks really, really good. The first one needed some help. Jackie, it took us three, but I learned so much from Jackie making those slopers that I could use that information on the next two people. And then I use that in teaching also. Carol Brasino, question. Please tell us again how to measure the shoulders using the clavicle bones. Thanks. Okay. So for women, where your bra strap sits comfortably is usually about that point. So you can use the inside of your bra strap or the outside of your bra strap. But the bra strap sits right over the end of the clavicle. Another way to find it is if you take your arm and move your arm up here, and you can feel where this bone rotates at the end of your, your clavicle is right here. This is your clavicle. You can see my clavicle. It's right here, this bone. It's my clavicle, and it goes out to here. And when I lift my arm up, I can feel the tip of it. So where you can feel the tip, that's the end of your shoulder. Now, some people may like to have their garment hang over their shoulder. If you do, that's okay. Just measure where it is. It's your garment. You can make it how you want. See how this hangs way off? This is a, a you know commercially made top. And for my size of my bust... This is how the shoulders look, but I think it would look better if I were making a sweater if my shoulders were up here. It just, you know, but it's a fashion thing too, you know, whatever's going on in fashion. Okay, Rebecca Single, question. If the bust starts cause extra length on the front, do we add length to the back as well? Let me show you uh, something that'll help you with that. This is a little prop that I use in my Boot Camp 3 class. And I think it's a really good one. Because I talk about bus shaping. So let me show this to you. Let's go to my hands. So this is a little bust schematic but I cut the darts out because the short rows are going to be in here. The short rows do not go to the edges of the fabric. They're inside here. Think of a heel of a sock. So when these, these would come together like this and like this, and there you have your bust. Do you see how it shapes the fabric? But the length of the side is not changing because these two are going to match up. So you don't need to lengthen the back. The sides, this side of this will be the same length as the back edge. Does that help you visualize that? Okay, let me see here. David, question, if you made your sloper from one inch grid paper fabric, could you then transfer the info to the graph paper? Exactly, exactly. Oh, so you're saying if you made, if you draped, yes, if you draped, did your draping, and you used the one-inch gridded pellon, which is like a fabric, and you used that to drape, then you could transfer that information straight over to your quarter-inch graph paper. Yes, exactly. Good question. You guys are so smart. Very cool. I'll have to try that sometime. Kayan. It is very useful that you demonstrated with Jackie's example of the different ways to adjust a person's shape and fit of the garment. Thank you. Joan Miller, question. Are you suggesting that we can disregard the part of the tutorial which talks about compound arm size schematics, page 28 through 32? In some cases. In Jackie's case, I first tried doing the compound arm size, but the difference was so small that it didn't really affect the garment. So I did not use that. 
I made her front and her back arm side the same. And the arm side, let me go back to my hands. Let's see what we're talking about here. The arm side is this part right here. That's the arm side. This is just the shoulder and the slope connecting the shoulder. This is the arm hole. The arm side is the curved area, the very underarm area. Okay, so I use the same arm side on the front and the back. Identical. And then you use that same arm side to make the shape of the bottom of the sleeve cap. You use the exact same information because this is going to fit together with this. Okay? Okay, let's see what another question. Yes, this is so good. You guys are so awesome. Okay. Diana Danko, question on Ravelry. Do you have to make the teddy bear? Oh, thank you, Diana. The teddy bear cardigan does not have to be weight made with worsted weight yarn. You can use any yarn you want and use an appropriate size needle for your yarn. Yes, and just follow the same directions. Thank you, Diana. KK, the bust start only adds length to make the front match the back. If you have a larger size chest, the fabric is shortened in the front because your bust holds it up. Exactly. Rebecca Senko, comment, thank you. I thought we did a triangle section to add bust starts like the short row swatch in boot camp. Yes, but it doesn't affect the edge of the fabric. It does. It only affects the center of the fabric. Center camera. Is my camera crooked? Okay. I was off camera. Okay, so. Anything else you want to talk about? So I think, and if I say this out loud, it's kind of scary. Oops, I dropped my paper. I love this little, I love this little thing. It's such a good visual. I think that I'm going to combine all four of the eye tags together into a book. And it's going to be called It Takes a Guild. And a lot of the information from each one of the tutorials is repetitious. For example, button bands are button bands. Pockets are pockets. You know, buttonholes are buttonholes. Seaming is seaming, so it doesn't have to be repeated. But then how to do the shaping, how to do customizing for each one of the sizes. I, th I mean, each one of the styles of garments. I think it's going to, it's a challenge, but I think I'm ready for it. It, it'll probably take me a couple of years to do that. Any other questions? Nope. So next week there is no live stream because it conflicts with the TKGA uh, virtual master um, class thing they're doing. The TKGA is doing next Saturday and Sunday. So I won't be doing a live stream next week but I will the following week. Um, and if you, any of you are signed up for the TKJ's Master's Day, I'm going to be presenting on s the first Saturday in a group with Charles Gandy, um, Beth Brown Renzel, and Donna Esten. We're going to be on a panel uh, for designers that people get to ask us questions. And I highly recommend doing, you don't have to be working on a master handing program to attend Master's Day. It's just going to be a lot of technical stuff about knitting, the nitty gritty, and it's not like anything else that you've ever attended. I think that you might really uh, enjoy it. So, any other questions, comments? So I'm going to let you go. I have to let Jackie get out of my stinky house. And um, I'm going to continue work reworking on this portion of it. And then I'm really excited because, did you see? Oh, oh. Where did I want to show you this. Here it is. So here is my swatch. Let me show you some things. And I'm going to make, um, this is something we could do on a live stream. Let me take this away. It's too bright. Okay. This is my swatch, and this is from the Japanese, um, it's not the Japanese Stitch Bible. This is the one, 200 Japanese Knitting Stitches. It's from this book. Okay, 
same author as the Japanese uh, Stitch Bible. And this is the stitch pattern here. This is one repeat of it, one multiple. There's a multiple right there. And what I did was I used elements of it to come down here to create my ribbing. Do you see the ribbing? It's not the same as this up here, but it's similar enough that it really, really goes. And I can show you how I figure that out. And we can do that probably, maybe even the next live stream, we can talk about that because it's really a fun thing to do. And I really enjoyed making custom ribbings that fit with the garment. Okay, so that's just an upcoming thing. I'm going to let you go. Too many fumes. And we'll see you week. And Jackie's waving bye bye over there. Bye. So we'll see you week after next, okay? Take care. Happy knitting.